Good morning, you guys. Welcome back to Lilith's Farm. Today we got a little bit of a different one for you. We have a ton of people who watch our videos mm -hmm. that want to come and move here to Panama. And, and with us living here for a little over a year now, I think we, we, we have a couple of things that we want to say, right? Today we want to tell you guys about all the things that no one told us about moving to Panama, but that are so, so important. When we decided we were going to move here to Boguete, Panama, we talked to as many people as possible yeah. who are already living here, asking questions, trying to get information. And something that everyone told us is how cheap it would be for us to hire labor. We told everyone we wanted to start a farm, and people were saying that we could hire help, we could hire workers for 10 or $15 a day. So whether it was a mechanic or a gardener or just someone to come and cut your grass, it didn't really matter what it was, any type of labor was just insanely cheap. And what no one told us was that all these people who were doing all this labor, that were getting paid 10 or $15 a day, were living like this. So these places are called camps and they're widely used by the Nobe tribe. They're the indigenous tribe of Panama. And generally these are the people who do a lot of the manual labor like farming, gardening, babysitting, all different stuff like that. And how we learned a lot of this stuff was we actually hired a Nobe and he's right here behind us. And his name's Iberto. Iberto, un pregunta. ¿Cuántas personas vive en el campo en el abajo? Hay como más de 50 en el campamento de acá nada más. 50. 50. So more than 50 people, more than 50 Nobe are living at the camp right at the bottom of our hill. And as we started talking to Iberto, he told us a lot of this stuff. Mm -hmm. Before working here, Iberto was a gardener and they were paying him $18 a day to be a gardener. And he was living at the camp down at the road. Mm -hmm. And that's something that no one really ever told us was right. that while it is great to have cheap labor and have someone cut your grass for 15 bucks. Sometimes it's a little hard to see the reality of what's going on. Um, what that causes for. What, what, what that lifestyle is like for them. Can you ask Iberto if he prefers living independently in, a, in an apartment or does he prefer living in the camps? Yeah, definitely he likes, he likes to live in his apartment because in the camp it's just like one room for everyone. So yeah. you can tell that you see everyone, everyone sees you, you don't have privacy at all. Right, right, right. And one thing that we quickly learned, especially with us being foreigners, is that if you can salvage an extra 10 to 15 dollars a day to help them out, an additional 10 to 15 dollars, it can make the world of a difference in their lives and allow them to co go and get their own apartment and maybe even buy a car and get the resources that they need to possibly even go to school and live a more independent life. And this brings us on to our second point, which we are very embarrassed, embarrassed to say, and that is speaking Spanish. We were told that when you move to Panama, when you come to Panama, especially in Boquete, you don't really need to know how to speak Spanish because mm -hmm. so many spe people here already speak English. And unfortunately, when we first arrived here a little over a year ago, we kind of took that advice very seriously. And we didn't really put a lot of effort into speaking Spanish and learning Spanish because we didn't think we were going to need it. And now, a year in, we are kind of kicking ourselves and we're playing catch up now because we're learning that it is something that we do need to know. And while there are a lot of people from the states in our town and other English speaking countries, and a lot of people, a lot of Panamanians can speak English, when it comes to important stuff like, let's say you get in an accident and need to give a statement, or let's say you need to go renew your driver's license or take a driver's test or anything involving the local government or really doing anything important, you're gonna to need to get a translator. And we've had to do that a couple times, or we've had to hire a translator at $100 an hour to come and give an official statement for us. And for me specifically, like just speaking from, from my experiences, I feel like if I'm in a situation like that and I'm in a situation where I'm trying to communicate with somebody and they don't know English, it makes me feel very uncomfortable because in, in my perspective, it almost feels like I'm disrespecting them and their culture. So the next thing that we learned is there are a lot of problems in Panama and in Boquete specifically with electricity. And I think the person who can talk about this the most is someone who actually lives in a house because we live on this piece of land, but Kake has been living in a house here for four years? More. More than four years, five years? Uh -huh. And how often would you say that the electricity goes out in your house? Are you ready for that? I'm ready. <laughs> At least 200 times a year. 
it is not like a, a, a bunch of hours every day, but every day for sure, like almost every day. Like yesterday, for example, we, the light, the power goes out for about seven hours. So yesterday was Valentine's Day and Jordan and I aren't really, we're not really into celebrating that. We, we talked about maybe going out for dinner, just for the heck of it. And so we didn't end up doing that. We went and hung out with some friends and said, and on our way home, it was like 6 p.m., prime time for a Valentine's Day dinner. And we're driving through town, and the entire town is black. So something no one will tell you is, it is so important here to have a backup power source, whether you're gonna do solar, a generator. And what I would honestly recommend is a Goal Zero product. This is not sponsored by them at all, but I'll put a couple links to products that I recommend down in the description. It's basically a battery that you can charge from your house outlet. And what that allows you to do is, let's say if you have to work, well, you can plug in your router and you can keep your internet going. Or let's say you have a uh, refrigerator full of food. You can plug in your refrigerator, keep all your food fresh, and you're not gonna waste a hundred bucks in food in your fridge. Yo, brother. So for those of you guys who don't know, this is our amigo Rodrigo. He's actually gonna be building a house on this land with us. So something that people will tell you, and people that told us when we first got here to Boquete, is that the weather here is the perfect weather in the entire world. And I'm gonna say that that is 100% false. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna say that they have the best temperature in the world. Yes. It stays between 60 and 80, 365 days out of the year. But the rain. The rain, the wind. So tell them a little bit about the rain here. Dude. The rain here is crazy. It could start raining like, okay, in five minutes, you see that it's pretty sunny now, in five minutes, it could start raining. And then what happens to the road? It gets so bad. It, it turns into a river. Yeah, it's, it's a river. <laughs> and if you guys are wondering how much rain are you talking about, it's a lot. So we are in the dry season right now. These are the driest months of the whole year. And if you look in the last month, we've already gotten nine and a half inches of rain. And to put that in perspective, that's more than a lot of places in Arizona get in a whole year. And this year, we'll expect somewhere of upwards of 120 of inches of rain for the whole year. We get so much rain that we're actively trying to figure out how to spin a water turbine <laughs> off of the rain because we have so much. And one of the other things, I guess I should say, they do, people have warned us about the wind here. But, I mean, I don't know, I, I don't know about you, but I remember when they told us and I was like, oh, come on. We were laughing. A little bit of wind, like, we come from Boston where we get friggin' sheets of ice layered on our car that we have to try to get off every morning before work. <laughs> but let me tell you guys, the wind here, especially where we're at, up in the mountains, it is insane. So insane that we can't leave anything outside because it will just get blown away into the jungle and we'll never see it again. And another thing is like if we wanted to just build ourselves a nice little, you know, simple shed, no footers, just, you know, simple little thing. Never, never gonna happen. That thing would just get demolished. <laughs> Honey, I need to know. What's the size of our baby today? <laughs> a blueberry. Baby Jay's a blueberry today. You mean Justin Bieber's blueberry? Maybe that's why we call him Baby Jay. Call it Baby Jay. Because it's really Justin Bieber's maybe, baby? Maybe, maybe. Maybe in another dimension, this is actually Justin Bieber's baby. I wake up this morning and Kaylee's telling me that the baby's not mine, it's actually Justin Bieber's. What? Because she had a dream <laughs> that the baby was actually Justin Bieber's baby. Could, couldn't you pick someone better? Yeah. <laughs> that, that's you, my, all my I'm question. Sorry. Wait, I'm sorry. Are you telling me you don't like Justin Bieber? <sighs> I'm telling you I don't like Justin Bieber. I just sent you a Justin Bieber song the other day. I like and you were this like, song. Oh, I really no, I like, like I like that song. <laughs> <laughs> Are you ready to go? Goodbye, baby. And the last thing that we want to talk about is Panama is a very, very small country. There's less than 4 million people that live here. And especially Boguete, it's a very small town. Now there is a downside to all that because your reputation here follows you everywhere. Once we came into town, we were told people to be careful of, people not to do business with, people to hire, people not to hire. And word here really spreads quick. It's such a tight-knit community and such a tight-knit town. So it's really important to be careful of who you do business with, who you associate yourself with. And who you tell things to. We just got back, back in the workshop. And I just want to end this video with one last thing. 
If you're coming to Panama, there's a lot of learning you're gonna have to do. And learning how to navigate the systems yourself is so important. Yeah. There's a lot of people here that make a living off helping you navigating systems, and that's great. But becoming reliant on that isn't so great because anytime you need to do something, you're not gonna have that connection. You're not gonna know the steps. Mm -hmm. You're not gonna have understood how to navigate problems here in Panama because it's a be, little bit different. Right, and to be completely honest, it's just gonna make <clears throat> your experience, in our opinion, that much more rewarding because you don't have to be relying on anybody else. Well, that's around this one. For all you guys there thinking about coming to Panama, we're excited to meet all you guys. But that's where I say goodbye to now for now. We love you guys so, 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 so much. Thank you for all your support, and we'll see you guys in the next one. See you next time.